DJI O3 Air Unit is nothing without light, durable drone that empowers you with thrills and courage for sensational freestyle and gives you full capacity for outstanding racing performance. That text was written by AI and smoke was Joe Mama vaping. But first, let me call to my expert. What's this? It's like, supposed to have a good picture, but I can't see it. It's like, whoa, so we got ourselves a D, an open racer with DJI O3 air unit. Like, man, that's, that's pimp. So it's like, picture's gonna be amazing, but I don't know, racing with this latency, like, if you hit a gate, <laughs> I mean, you won't see it till tomorrow, so I guess that's good. In case you didn't know, this is Open Racer, a frame that I spent a lot of time to design. This orange thing is the pod that fits DJI O3 Air Unit, and this is just one of the many pods I made for this frame. There are multiple different style pods for HD0 for different cameras, there are pods for analog multiple versions, there are pods for even DJI Vista. A few talented guys helped me to make more pods, and of course the whole Houston crew is helping to test every pod and the carbon. And you know, every week we fly at night spot, full of concrete trees and metal poles. So all the files for this frame are free to download from GitHub, the link in the description. And of course you can get this frame for yourself from CNC Madness, I think this is just carbon here, and my favorite store 533, here they selling carbon and canopies. Of course all the links are there. But today let's talk about specifically DJI O3 Air Unit version. Because to be honest with you, this frame in combination with O3 Unit makes me very excited. Calm down bitch. 2.7K recording, 120 frames per second, with optional stabilization, well protected inside of the pod, inside of durable racing frame. Honestly, I don't need GoPro anymore for the hobby, feels like waste of money now, because this thing is heavy and runs out of battery for recording. So I don't know why would I need these freestyle buses these days. And you see it's empty here because I didn't fly it nearly as much as this beast. Look at that. And the latency? Of course I feel it. Does it bother me? Zero bother. Would I race it? Of course I would, especially if everyone on the same boat. Does it make my lap time slower? A little bit, just a little bit. But the enjoyment level, enjoyment, but the enjoyment level, especially because of these recording capabilities, is just like... Phew. So now it's gonna be 5 minutes of how you put this frame together. It's pretty straightforward, but I'm also showing some of the building techniques I'm using. But easily use the content menu and skip that part, because at the end we're talking about advantages, disadvantages of this frame and having some extra fun. See you there! So a quick assembly guide. First of all, you need to put together the carbon. And the carbon is exactly the same no matter which canopy you are using, analog, HD0 or DJI, Vista, whatever. The frame supports both 30x30 and 20x20 stacks, and even 25x25 all-in-ones. But for O3 assembly, I recommend 20 by 20 stacks because they give you a little bit more clearance here between the air unit and your flight controller. So for 20 by 20 stack, first of all, you need to put the stack screws in. Find the top plate. This plate has press nuts and a little bar at the front. I know lots of people put this bar at the back to mount capacitor, but the original purpose of this bar is to make frame the middle part a little bit more durable for the front heats because these are the most dangerous ones. <laughs> So 20 millimeters button head screws for two layer stack. Don't use three layer stack with DJI because it's just not enough room there. And don't put 25 millimeter there because again, it's just not enough room there under DJI for 25 millimeter screws. And very important, use metal nuts to secure these screws with a carbon. You see, I even put thread locker in the, under these nuts. And even use pliers to make sure they never come off by themselves. And to be honest with you, blue thread locker is my friend number one for building drones. I use it for almost all construction screws for press nuts and motor screws. Literally on everything except the plastic nuts on top of the stack and the little screws that holding the canopy from the top. Without it you're just risking of losing your motor in the air. And it's not the question if it's going to happen, it's the question when it's going to happen. 
That's smart. Mm. First of all, you need a good screwdriver that stays sharp no matter what. You see, mine even says nice. Now that's nice. Then, if your screw doesn't come off, don't panic and don't try it too hard. Just, just stop. So before you strip it, take the torch lighter and heat the screw up. I said screw up, but don't screw up. Like, five seconds. And then, if you haven't stripped it yet, then it will come off very easily, like a butter, like very easily, I'm telling you. Affiliate link is in the description, use it, especially if you're gonna buy like a fridge or I don't know, a car from Amazon. Now, bottom plate. These little slots are on the sides, they're for your battery strap. And you can see there's plenty of room for your battery strap and it's not rubbing ESC or electronics like in the other frames. So next, these four internal construction screws. They must be 12 millimeters and they are countersunk. When you put them in, they must go through these uh, press nuts at the top. Sorry, I don't have press nuts in the drawing. So put them in and insert arms and then secure the arms with the outer screws. These outer screws should be 16 millimeters. So these 12 millimeters and these 16 millimeters. So this is how it should be from the top. You see, these 12 millimeter screws should be flush with the press nut. And these are sticking out, but they're not sticking out too much. Because if they're sticking out too much, you'll have problems securing the canopy on top of it. If they're not sticking out enough, then the standoffs are not going to be secure on these screws. So 16 millimeters, 12 millimeters. And don't blindly assume you're always getting correct screws from the shop. Everyone is making mistakes. So tighten them up and you're good. This was the whole carbon frame assembly, just 12 screws. Then I can formal coat all my electronics using the swabs from expired COVID tests. And actually, I prefer to do it outside because the fumes, I don't know, they might not be very healthy. Now you're ready to put motors on ESC, solder motors to the ESC and put flight controller on. Secure the motor wires with electrical tape and connect flight controller with the ESC. Now you're ready to plug in the battery, probably I should have done it with a smoke stopper and connect it with Betaflight, flash, do like a basic setup and basic verification without the video. Now interesting part, the canopy and O3 unit. First you need to cut these wires long, like right here as far from air unit as possible and then disconnect this antenna. You see this like a little metal bar that holds the antenna. So disconnect antenna. Then you need to insert this antenna inside... Um, Butthole? So something like this and the antenna sort of snaps in. Then you fold camera cable like this and then air unit goes inside the canopy like this. So the camera cable goes right here in this little space along the antenna behind the air unit. And air unit goes inside the canopy relative to it like this. So you see this USB will match with this USB hole. And then these antenna plugs are at the front of the canopy. So before you fully insert the air unit, you need to plug in the UFL antennas and secure connection with this little smart ass panel. Inserting the air unit is not super easy, but, but you can handle that, come on. It sort of snaps inside and then you need to move it all the way towards the back. So it should look like that. And you see these little ears are securely holding your air unit. Now put the camera and this little room in between I'm using to keep the receiver. Don't forget four camera screws and you have this little hole for binding and um, this hole for USB access to download your beautiful videos and uh, update the firmware. Then time to solder then time to solder your receiver and air unit. Of course with the props off. Don't don't do this. And you see I am purposely using long wires so that it's easier to maintain. Now it's time to check that you have video that your receiver is connecting to flight controller and everything is talking together. With the props off of course. After I verify that everything is working together as expected I use B7000 on all the little soldering joints to make them a little bit more reliable. So B7000 glue is like my third best friend in drone building. I always use it on the soldering joints and it's easy to peel off you just like don't rip it you grab it and twist with the tiny little tweezers. A link to this friend is in the description. So we're pretty much done building. Don't forget these uh, four little 10 millimeter standoffs and put the canopy on. Don't fly like this yet. You have to use six millimeter screws, four of them, to secure the canopy. Well, unless you want to teach your canopy to fly separately from your drone after the crash. M maybe it will finish a lap. So capacitor can go like this, for example, on the zip tie and a little bit B7000 around so that it doesn't come off. And it's important, do it on the soft pieces of motor 
wires. Don't use these two hard pieces coming from the capacitor from the manufacturers that just like makes your drone to vibrate, break off eventually, and then and then you like just go home. If you want to be super safe with your ESC, then you can use a trick like this with a long power wire and use like a big zip tie to connect it with the arm and then you can mount capacitor there. Then your ESC is super safe, you're not gonna damage it even if you crash like many many times and your battery swings away, but then it adds maybe like 10 to 15 grams. But ever since I started using Foxier, I use this short wire and I don't have any problems. Like Foxier ESCs are pretty durable. Tuning of this beast. So first time I built it, I started flying it on defaults and then I tried Karate Ray 6S and it like didn't feel right. I tried to adjust some PIDs, it, it went a little bit better, but still wasn't feeling great. Then I recorded Black Box and saw this. <laughs> So apparently it was just like a bad flight controller and I replaced it. And after that it was just Remember from previous videos? Means like very good. So I just used Karate Ray 6S preset with my normal RC Link preset. And then here on the filter tab I used this D-term filter multiplier to make things a little bit more spicy. So moving this slider to the right you're getting hot motors but better prop wash handling on the hard maneuvers. Look at my arm it goes into the fifth dimension. So 1.5 for me usually is a little bit too much so I leave it at 1.3 maybe 1.2. But you gotta fill your motors by yourself. I mean I I can try to help fill them. Oh yeah, that's a little bit too hot. I hope it was a motor. What the, what the? So what are disadvantages of this frame? With 45 or 50 degrees camera angle, you don't see any props in view. But as you go lower, of course you will see some. The frame is not super easy to build because of how all three units fits inside, but you really do it only once. The stack maintenance is super easy, especially if you leave these long wires. Just make sure when you open the canopy, don't do it like this because you will like rip all the wires. So I usually do it like with a finger and push it up like this and then you can safely take it off. The arm replacement is super easy, it's just one screw, then you loosen this screw and then you can swap the arm. I think I was talking about disadvantages, wasn't I? You need to be very particular with the screws and not just with the lens but also with the material. So these eight screws from this side, they have to be 12.9 grade, otherwise you'll be snapping them like m red crashes. So not aluminum, not titanium. For all the other screws like motor screws or screws to secure the canopy, you can use aluminum or titanium to save the weight. And that's what I'm actually doing because I like to save like a few grams. By the way, this frame does have a little bit of wiggle like this. And I know some people will be like, oh, I don't know, it's gonna vibrate in there. How about that? So of course, if this arm is like wiggle like this, then you have a problem. But if you keep these screws tight, there is nobody in the air that does this with your frame with like 50 pounds force. And in fact, this frame doesn't have resonances below 200 hertz, which is not many racing frames out there can repeat that. If you snap this 20 by 20 millimeter screw, then unfortunately you have to disassemble the whole frame to replace it. But on the other side, if your stack screws are messed up bad, you have bigger problems than that. Also, not all the ESCs are fitting this frame. For example, if you want to use Foxier 20 by 20, don't buy the very, very long 160 amp. You gotta buy a square 160 amp and that one fit. The long one is just is just too long. But most of the 20 by 20 and 30 by 30 ESCs, they work good with this frame. So advantages. This frame is super durable and super protective for all your electronics inside. And even for the camera, look at that. Like you see, there's no camera sticking out. Oh yeah, I like that. And this was quite a challenge to make this camera protection and keep it out of camera view. You can even get a front and rear brace if you want like a super protection, but you can see I fly without it in concrete, no problem. I just have like a spare arm in my, in my backpack. Also, this frame is pretty light, 350 grams build up with O3 unit, with 2207 motors, with props, and with all this durability and protection. This is about 60 or maybe 70 grams more than the normal analog racing drone. This is also open racer, by the way, just with with a different canopy. But if you compare it with a classic freestyle frame like bus like this, just just don't even compare. So honestly, this drone is such a great joy to fly. It's great for freestyle, it's great to fly through the racing course, it's great to chase and film other drones on the course, like 120 frames per second. Like, you can ask Houston crew, I just fly this drone all the time when I have a chance, when we don't have too many pilots up in the air because, you know, DJI interference. So this is Mr. Lucas, he's squatted on the line, but he's pissed off because this guy flies DJI and he can't fly with him. It's your fault because you let him... Look at his smile, huh? <laughs> 
Yeah, it's amazing. Pretty nice. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty nice. So huge thanks to everyone who helped me with the design and testing, and especially huge thanks for 533 for picking up this frame and start selling it. I don't get any cut of it unless you're clicking my affiliate links. So I hope you will enjoy this frame as much as I do. And of course, don't forget about my Patreon and also Karate Chop your... Sorry, wrong clip. Like and subscribe now. See you in the next video, if I am not lazy. Yeah.